I'm Jared Waitley. He's Mark Robinson. This Wednesday night, it's footy from all angles. Hello, Robbo. Hello, Jared. Fair to say there was a bit to wade through today. And last night, actually. The story broke last night. It's out for a couple of hours. Spoke to a couple of club officials last night. Get a handle on what was going on and woke up this morning. And Yeah, it's, it's been an interesting day. I know that's a really soft word to say, but... I, I felt differently. More, I felt a lot differently at midday as I, than I did last night at 10, 10 o'clock, when more information came in. That, I'm not saying that everything's right. I agree with everything, but I, um, I felt a little bit better. All right. Well, let's get straight into it. And on the top of the agenda, events that were set in trail last night in federal parliament, when Independent MP Andrew Wilkie used his privilege to outline an off-the-books set of tests that are conducted within the AFL's illicit drug policy. That's information that I've got no idea about. This policy is an AFL policy, it's an AFLPA policy, and it's led through a, a medical model. So you're asking me questions that I have no line of sight over, and it's something that I've never really thought about, to be honest. Um, you know, I just back in the process of what the policy is, and these are questions you're going to have to ask the AFL. What we're trying to do is prioritise the health and safety of our players. We don't want our players, if there's a chance that they might have a substance in their system. We don't want them trading and we don't want them taking part in matches for their health and welfare above anything else. It's always been a voluntary policy that was, you know, I don't want to sort of hark back to the old days, so I was introduced when I was a player through the Players Association and, and that was clearly um, the model of the day and it's evolved over time. It's moved from three strikes to two strikes, um, but always at the core of it has been a medical model. Um, the AFL's been up record with the Players Association off the back of the most recent CBA that is under review, and, and I think like anything, it should be. There is a, a well, a, a world's best um, practice, which involves a level of confidentiality, and I can unequivocally say in my time in football, I've never been alerted to the fact that a player has tested positive to an illicit substance. Um, unless it's you know, out in the public domain. Um, but, but I'm not part of that process, and to my knowledge, no senior coach is. I think they're a societal issue. Uh, you know, it's, it's not uncommon to, to hear stories of things, um, you know, around society, but I think, you know, majority of footballers, I would say, are very dedicated and, and passionate about performing at the highest level, and clearly you have to be on top of your decision-making and preparing really well to get the best possible performance on game day. So I think, you know, across our club, it's something that we do really well. Absolutely we will. I think every person in Clubland would want answers and want understanding of how the policy works and is it a success? And um, we're no different to that. Um, yeah, we've been through a bit, but as I said, this is an AFL policy and um, we'll be asking the appropriate questions and getting the answers that we need. There's a difference between what the public is interested in and what's in the public interest. And we've had, a, you know, there's been cases on that over the journey and the, you know, the findings of in those cases has been that the private, you know, the doctor, patient confidentiality is paramount and it should be prioritised. Footy Drugs Rort was how it appeared on the front page of the Herald Sun today. It emanated from Andrew Wilkie and accusations that were levelled by former staffers and leaders at Melbourne. So, Robbo, maybe our conversation is best framed through four different questions. Yep. The first of which goes to the core of the, the Wilkie accusation. Is this a cover-up? Oh, according to some in football, no doubt. You've got club presidents, you've got club CEOs, you've got coaches. Um, not aware that this practice existed, um, you know, Kennedy and Ed McGuire, they were strong that play, the club should find out about, about um, drug strikes and, and players with drug issues. And I, I feel for the coaches. The coaches have been lied to. I, under this model, like, I'll use Simon Goodwin for example, uh, and you're Joe Bloggs. Hey, Joe, what, what's, what's happened with you this week? Oh, I've got a tight hammy. Well, that's a lie. Oh, he runs in the doctor. Oh, what's wrong with Joe? No, oh, tight hammy. That's a lie. So the whole premise is on, 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 on lies. People have to lie, and I don't know if that's ideal. But at the same time, Jared, how would you like it if your private health was open slather for everyone to know? And I don't yep. think people, people should have their medical records exposed. So it's a real... It's a real conundrum. It's always... This policy has always been vexed. It has never garnered public confidence and it's never garnered public favour and it wasn't set up to do so. The lack of transparency, though, is genuinely 
concerning. So it should have been declared many years ago that within this policy was the capacity to target test players and if they failed that test they wouldn't be allowed to take the field. It would never be declared but it should have been well known right through the industry and indeed by the football public. And it is very sound practice to not allow a player with an illicit drug yeah, substance the, in his that, system to take the field because it is a breach of the overriding which is code. the word of the that should Wadico. have been declared years ago and keeping that secret has led to a clandestine behaviour. There was no other way to interpret mm. what was laid bare, and particularly once so the AFL confirmed most of the facts associated that were, that were documented last night. Yeah, secrets and lies. I mean, it, it begs the question, what else is there being covered up? What else is not being released to the, to the public and to the clubs? And the AFL can say, oh, there's nothing else. They said today, or the, the message today, Jared, was that you know, no one really asked. That, that's, that's, that's a lie. No, so this is the second part, is how wide lie. does it cast suspicion? So Enormously. The, yeah, it, it is a betrayal of the whole football public. It's fine to lecture that you're not to know about the specific player, and that is a totally defensible position. Mm -hmm. But the rest of it is... You and I have both had episodes through our reporting careers and I went back and found the one that most triggered with me today on AFL tables, the player, the weeks and the questions that were asked at the time, vehement denials that this was not related to drugs. The player wasn't stood down because of positive tests. It was what the club had declared. That's just not true. No, that's not true. And you don't have to go far back in and, history. And, and so I went back to my beat days, but you don't have to go back very no, far you, no, you don't have to, to go back figure that far. we were, if you held suspicions, that you were actually right. And, and for people sitting at home, people in the media knew of players. And there's enough anecdotal evidence around to suggest that players were not playing because of drug taking. But you can't for a medical health reason, again, you just can't name players. So there's a protection for them, and I think there has to be a protection for them. Now, I feel for the fans, the fans love this game, and they feel that the integrity of the game has taken a hit today. Regardless that the AFL says, no, no, this is the best practice and this is what we're trying to do, on the other side is fans want to believe in the integrity of the game. They hate it when there's, when there's betting on games of football by players. They hate it with drug taking. And then they find out, Jared, that the AFL has ticked off secret drug tests. And they go, hang on, what, what else is there? What else is there? So I think the AFL... People don't like the AFL much. Um, have they lost... Have they lost the public a bit today? I think they have. Yeah, I agree Yeah, with that. I think it's they have, and that's in, really invent, unfortunate. Inventing business. injuries to cover other... Yeah. That, that, that's poor practice, regardless of the practicalities of it. So this is, the next part is, is it a flaw in the policy itself? So you try to weigh the two. The first is there is, without question, there is a... Private medical records are sacrosanct. Mm -hmm. So you have that, and then you balance it against... Who is and isn't available to play in each game of footy is fundamental to the functionality and the credibility of the, oh, game. Of the game. So you weigh the two. I feel like the policy is, as, as it looks today, it is out of whack. It will hurt the players themselves because the vast majority of the player group are in the other portion who are now going to suffer suspicion at the first sign of illness managed hamstring awareness. Yeah. That, taken out in the day. There's now a jaundiced view of all of that. Mm. So you weigh one up against the other. It, it's no good having a name and shame policy, but I think there is a middle ground but there that is, can be achieved. But there is yeah. a name and shame policy, Jared. if someone takes a photo of someone taking coke in the yeah. public... So you get two weeks. Because there's the branding. Yeah. That you hurt the brand of the AFL, you can get two weeks. But meanwhile, we've got... I'll make up a figure. 36 players over here who have taken coke... But they haven't been caught by anyone except they put their hand up and said, hey, I might have taken it, oh, you don't play. They don't. They don't get named in shame. They get named in shame when they get caught. And I don't know if that's a fair system. And the, and the, and the thing I want to say is we're sitting here saying, oh, AFL, you do this, and doctors, you're aligned, and players, you're aligned. In actual fact, Jared, the, the problem goes back to the players taking drugs on a Tuesday or a Wednesday before a game of football and say, hey, 
Help me, can you? I think I've got it in my system. I had a big night last night. I think I've got it in my system. Oh, yeah, yeah. You don't play this week. You know, the, the actual... The greater cohort of the players should say to those players, those who are taking the mickey out of the system, not those with legitimate mental health issues, and they exist. Let's not kid ourselves. They exist. It's a high-pressure environment. They exist. But you people who are... You are wrecking it for all of us. They're the ones that should be targeted. Absolutely wrecking it. And, you know, as much as I said, the AFL getting the heads kicked in today, how about we start kicking some of these players' heads in? Yeah, so there's been the, the level of if you damaged the brand and got photographed or filmed, oh, that yeah, was two weeks for you, so yeah. you get punished. But right. it turned out there was a parallel system where you would get punished, you would get stood down from a game... It's just there was no transparency. But there's no about shame it. It in that. A hamstring. But there's no shame yeah, in that. I don't think you need to shame. No, no, the but you are but there shamed. There was a punitive measure inside the system which was never declared. There's nothing more punitive, Jared, than being on the front page of a newspaper, my newspaper, our newspaper, on the front page of that with a nasty headline on it. That is punishment. Yes, but that's damaging to the individual. It's damaging we to the brain. We always take footy away from the player. And that, that is actually what's been happening behind the scenes. It was never declared and it will, should have been. So the last is the source of this is Melbourne, which continues on. Mm. It owes to the former president and the former doctor. Yep. So this has been a running battle for, what, two and a half two years half now. Years, so how yeah. damaging is it particularly to Melbourne? It's damaging broadly. What about specific to Melbourne? Oh, of course it's damaging specifically to Melbourne. Because Glenn Bartlett and... And um, the, the former doctor, that's, that, that's where they come from. And we've seen what the headlines surrounding Melbourne and some of the issues with their players in the, in, the, in the last six months. But, again, I felt for Simon Goodwin today, and there he is at training today, Jared. He, he's battled a lot. And to come out and have his, have his team front and square again, and he was quite right to say, every club has suffered this. If you want to say suffered is the word, every club is has fallen victim to this 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 cover up this clandestine act by the AFL it's not just melbourne but they are like the carrying the flag at the yep. moment but there's every club marching behind them i i, I suspect there's a couple of things you were right yeah i, I think i agree they're going to they're, they're going to have to redo the illicit drug policy yep. uh, 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 scrap it if your players are going to abuse it we'll scrap it and you're on your own you can go and get caught by wada OK, so take that responsibility. And the other one is, when will club presidents come up and say, hey, they're going to have to discuss if they've got more transparency at club level? They just have to. Because if I recruit you, Jared, and you've got a drug problem, I don't know about it. I don't know about it. The AFL knows about it. Oh, yeah, we can't tell you, Melbourne. Not like any club. Any club. I'm not going to tell you, but you'll have to take him. Oh, why didn't you tell us? Nah. Privilege information. Yeah, out of today comes reform. It was already being reviewed, but there'll have to be something meaningful to strike a better balance.